Dan, if you could supply filmmakers with a checklist of do's and don'ts before they make their movie, sort of these, uh, you know, film festival do's and don'ts, before they make their film that would improve their chances of getting into a festival, what would they be? So my advice before you even made your movie is, number one, to go to a few film festivals and just find out, like, oh, that's what people are making these days, or that's what people aren't making these days, and, you know, and this is, and a short should be, oh, shorts are this long, and I see shorts before features, and that's because they're under 10 minutes. Oh, I get it. Or I go to a short film festival, and that's where longer shorts are. Um, or this genre of features are getting made this year, you know. Um, because I think what frequently happens is that people will sometimes make what they think is the hot film of what film festivals want to expect. So consequently you get, you know, over the years at Slamdance and other festivals, you know, you would see this litany of films that were, you know, about six best friends all sitting around taking drugs, talking about how they were going to film themselves robbing a bank. And you're like, if I see one more film like that, I'm gonna shoot myself, you know, uh, I'm gonna shoot them instead of them shooting each other. Um, and, and you know, and, and that was kind of the trend for a while. But it was like, but that was that was the problem. Is people were seeing like the Tarantino movie or the Kevin Smith movie or whatever, and say, "Oh, I'm going to make that movie." Well, now by the time you've made that movie, it's now three years later, and you, you wouldn't have been cutting edge even one year later. You know, but you've got to make something original. Um, so I think originality is the w one advice, and whether that's in style, form, content, narrative, you know. There's got to be something original about it, um, or else the film festival programmers are going to get really bored um, and and turn it off within the first ten minutes, and they and they do that. So and that's the other thing: is your first ten minutes has to be really good. Um, if it's a narrative feature, and your first one minute has to be really good. If it's a short, because um, yeah, festival programmers, acquisitions executives, they will turn off your film very quickly. Um, but uh, but other but otherwise, my advice is make the movie you want to make. Don't make a movie just to get into film festivals. Make the thing that you're passionate about, and don't listen. Certainly, don't listen to any film festival programmer or director after you've started making the film. You know, because I've seen that happen. Like you know, they'll submit a rough cut, and someone will say, "Oh, that's good," and we'll think about it if you do this, and then they start tinkering. It's like, no, don't listen to anyone. Just do your own thing, or, ha or listen to your own team of people, however you, you are as a filmmaker, but don't listen to any film festival person tell you what to do, because it will be the wrong advice, whatever it is. Um, because at the end of the day, filmmakers have to live with these films. They are your babies, and whether they're sitting in your closet, or they're sitting on a or you've got a shelf fill of, filled with Oscars. It's your film, and 20 years later, you've got to look at that thing and say, oh, am I proud of this, or not proud of it, or oh, did I compromise to get into some festival that I didn't get into anyway, you know? So, you know, I think it's, I think people, more often than not, try to rush their post-production to get into a festival, uh, you know, to get into a certain deadline, or they'll rush their production schedule to get into thinking that they're going to get into Sundance or Toronto or whatever it is, and um, and I think that's always a mistake. Uh, that said, it can be somewhat helpful to kind of push things along in post production. Like, oh, okay, we, you know, there is this festival deadline. Let's let's get a cut in by then. So let's so that gives us a deadline to get a cut done. But let's keep working. You know, that that that's not going to be a final cut. You know, so. Um, but a lot of filmmakers sort of fall prey to that, you know, methodology of, oh, we've got Sundance coming, let's rush our post-production. And really, as an indie filmmaker, your post-production time is the one luxury you do have, is time. You don't always have money. So take your time with your films and don't worry about festival deadlines. They will come and go and, you know, the good thing is now, 20 years after we started Slam Nights, there are more festivals out there. I mean, the year we started, it was also the year that, uh, within that year kind of radius, that South by Southwest started, by Hampton started, LA Film Festival started, um, New York Underground, Chicago Underground, a lot of uh, other festivals started kind of in that year. And so now, if you miss the Sundance deadline, it's not the end of the world. You know, you can premiere your film at South by or at Tribeca or at, or in international festivals, um, you know, or Toronto. It's there's always more festivals, so don't rush your deadlines. Who should a filmmaker? Oh no, it, it sounds great, right. and I, I like what you say about how 
don't let one festival program or sort of determine how you should gear your film because you may not get in. But then there's that idea of that hard-headed artist that doesn't want to change their idea despite the same feedback that's given back well, to Well, yeah, I mean, that's, point, that's my though, advice yeah. in general for filmmakers. If you are getting a consistent feedback, and not necessarily from festival people, but from anyone, your friends, family, crew, your producers, partners, whatever, um, you know, if one person says something, you can ignore them. But if three or four or five or ten people are saying consistently the same thing, now, they may not have the right solution. I think that's the, that's the trap people fall in. Like, oh, ten people are telling me I've got to change this cut because the joke isn't working or I've got to take cut this character. Well, they may all be pointing to the same problem, but their solution may not be the right solution. So you have to kind of think a little bit deeper. Like, okay, these people are all telling me something. I don't know what it is but there's definitely something that is affecting people in the same way and so you need to kind of think okay what is the root of the problem because remember when you show a film to anyone else they don't know what other footage you have and what other footage you don't have so they can't really give you good advice on how to recut even your own producers you know or your you know it's like it's really you and the editor or if you are the editor you know you're the only one who knows what else there is and what else there isn't and what the other options were and how you could have cut this or how you could have cut that so but if people are saying, well, the pacing is this or the whatever, you know, whatever advice, whatever thing they're latching onto, it is worthwhile listening to. Um, the nice thing about comedies, by the way, is of course you can always just see, are people laughing or aren't they laughing? And you need about ten people in a room before you can figure that out. With dramas, it's a little trickier. You can't always tell.